Hey guys, welcome to today's video, and we actually have the guest here, HWZ. For sure. You guys already know him, but uh, I finally got to uh, collab with him. HW, can you say what's up? Yo, what is up? Thank you for having me, Burrito. It is, uh, it's been a long time coming. I was supposed to bid on this channel. I apologize. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I apologize. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, I just appreciate you for your, for your time. Uh, it means a lot to me, uh, beyond just being a content, you know, YouTube thing, but it just means a lot that you're here. Yeah, man. No, yeah. no, no problem at all, man. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I love working with other creators. It's, it's always a pleasure. I saw H Dub on Twitch. He was doing account takeovers and I saw him doing his thing. And I was like, you know what? I feel inspired to do my own thing. So in a lot of ways, H Dub, I credit a lot of whatever success that comes on this channel from you. So, you know, I appreciate you for that. Man, it'll be it'll be all yours, bro. If you if you get it, it's all it's all your work, your hard work and you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. So speaking about being a YouTuber, I've been a YouTuber I've been doing raid for about something like a year now. And I wanted to talk to you since you're a lot more seasoned than I am about some of the good and the bad of being a YouTuber. So we have some talking points here. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to be pulling shards every time we finish a topic. I think I'll pull like two sacreds or something per topic that we go back and forth on. And then I'm going to send my account over to HW. You guys can follow along and then finish the conversation over on HWZ's channel. We're going to be continuing to pull shards there. And if I need to get more shards, we'll get more shards. First collab with a big CC. All right, let's get started. The first good thing that I like about being a YouTuber is that in a way I get to be my own boss. I get to set my own schedule. I get to choose what content I do. I can choose how long it takes and I can be the creative director of my own channel. H Dub, do you want to lay some thoughts down on this one? You put it into the perfect words, right? This is your your playground. You can do whatever you want with it, go about it however you want, right? Knowing that whatever you do intent, you know, you put out is going to speak to a certain audience or not speak to a certain audience you have whatever time you have to do it up to your own discretion so it's pretty much free reign as long as you know youtube doesn't get your you know take your content down you can do whatever you want with this this is it's a it's a open for anything I, and that's what i like the most about it you could be yourself or you know like some people you could be somebody else like <laughs> oh yeah but, there's there's that there's that yeah, there's that <laughs> it is what uh whatever it is that you make it and i think with any like good decision uh everything sort of relies on on you it's your it's your baby it's your business while you can take pride in being your own boss uh you also have to take on that responsibility how long have you been doing youtube by the way h -Dub? i want to say it's been just over two to three years where like i uploaded a video and then like i wasn't really doing youtube i don't consider that doing youtube yeah some people do you know not everybody has the goal to upload every day some people say man just upload so yeah i i did just upload on a serious note i've been taking it a lot more serious in the last like year and a half we got to get him to 8k so make sure everybody you subscribe to uh h so we can get on the ter uh, test server test server bang out some more good content but okay that would be awesome we're gonna be pulling two sacreds now one for me one for h -Dub. there is a progressive chance who do you think I should go for? I don't have you don't you don't have who? I don't have Ancora. I don't have Snow White or Gal King Galkabar. And we were definitely pulling for Ancora, no okay. question. Yeah, I skipped the fusion because I was like, put a tinfoil hat on me, but I'm pretty sure Valerium heavily weights fusion champions over the rest of the other champions. You got a big chance of pulling there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got a progressive. Let's go ahead and pull two and see what we get. Oh man. You know, I'm, I'm really hoping that with h -Dub being here, his luck will shine through. Okay, you know, we're just warming it up, we're warming everything up. It's warming up. It's we warming just, we up. just, we're preheating. We're, we're preheating. preheating. Turns out I actually need Enda right here. She is one of the last champions that I need to fuse Makage. You, you'll get her, you'll get her. We'll get there. The next good thing is that you get to make a positive impact within the world 
if you want to reach that far or within your own little community. You can educate, you can entertain, or you can inspire others. Someone actually came to me and started asking me questions about it and said, okay, look, you know, I got all this equipment. What do you think? I'm going to start doing uh, raid content. And I was like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm glad you're, you're getting up and you're doing something about it. You can make a real difference in viewers' lives. HW, do you want to say anything about that? Piggybacking off the idea of like, you know, other people want to do this. A lot of people want to do this, right? Sometimes think, you know, I, well, I don't have the equipment. I don't have the tools or, you know, I don't know how to go about it. But it's like, uh, you know how to go about it because you're watching this content mm -hmm. and you just need to give yourself a fair shot. I've seen it happen time and time again. I'm like, look, if you have a computer, if you have a phone, you can do this. I know people streaming off the phone, yep. streaming without a camera. You don't need a camera. You don't need all these fancy lights and all that. Bro, you just need to get on there and you yep. need to just be you. Present whatever you feel like you're ready to present to the world. Somebody's going to come across you. Somebody's going to click on it. Somebody. Mm -hmm is gonna leave some feedback. So everybody can make some sort of impact. You don't have to let the things that you feel like you don't have hold you back from that. I try to make a positive impact. I don't try to be negative. Yeah. One thing I, I try to make sure I don't do, and I may have done this at one point or another, but I like actively make sure that I don't like shit on the game, bro. Like, <laughs> despite how frustrated I might be or how frustrated I know the community might be, I, I make it a point to not like crap on the game because like nothing good, nothing good is going to come from us crapping on the game, right? We need to at least provide some positivity, some positive feedback, some sort of actual feedback that the game can work with, the devs can work with, the representatives of the devs that we have communication with can actually work with. And that is how we make progress. Yes, I love to educate. I love to entertain, inspire, what have you. But I'm here to tell you that you can do all of that too. Hell Hades, a, a long time ago, he didn't even show his face when he started doing YouTube. He, he just had a camera and he just put out good content. Mm -hmm. It was just his voice, but it was a while before he got his uh, face reveal out there. And now he's like the biggest one here. And just to hit on what you said about like the phone, people record videos and upload them from their phone. So if you can watch us, you can do YouTube if that's something that you really yep. want to do, but you got to really want it. I like that you try to stay positive. If you know me, I try to be positive too. Keep positive positive constructive yeah man it's so easy to be negative the algorithm loves negativity mm -hmm. actually when some drama happens or something negative happens people yep. will feed into it they will latch on to it and it's even worse if it's true right so oh. if, that, if, that, <laughs> if that negative things turn turns out to be true then then it's not now it has even more of an impact positivity yeah. i feel like it could have that same effect but it's so much easier for like something negative to grab a hold onto people. We expect things to be positive, right? Because of basic moral standard, right? We expect the positive. So when you see something positive happen, you might approach it as, oh, I expected that, or that that's what should be happening. But when something negative happens, because we have laws, because we have rules in your brain, as soon as you see it, you inherently think this is something that doesn't happen that often. Now I need to see what this is about. And this is why like when things that are inherently negative are put out there, yeah. people just grab a hold. They're like, oh, what is this? What, how, how did this happen? Same thing with YouTube. You can put out a thousand different titles for the same video. Yeah. And guess which one is going to do the best? The one that people hate the most. The clickbait about <laughs> something negative or something. It's, it's something true. that is true. It's I'm true. not lying. I'm not lying. And I've, I've seen content creators say this like, hey, man, y'all say y'all don't want to be clickbaited, but the numbers don't lie. The numbers do not lie. Mm -hmm. If I clickbait a video, it's going to do genuinely better. Or if like the biggest content creator clickbaits you into something, it will do honestly better than had they just told you exactly what the video is about. I'm not going to say that's going to happen 100% of the time, but the numbers don't lie. Yeah, exactly. Men lie, women lie, but the numbers don't lie. All right, let's go ahead and pull our one more shard for this topic. Come on, come, come on. on. Oh, oh, my God. Hey, Nubcax. <laughs> Nubcax in the building. What's up? He wanted to make a cameo for this one. Man, we appreciate you coming through, man. You travel <laughs> far, far and wide. Dude, I love Nubcax, man. He's always a positive dude. You know, I take that energy. I'm like, I, I just, I feel good after watching a Nubcax video. 
He's a great. He, he's great, man. He would actually be a good person to pick pick brain about content creation. This is the thing about a lot of raid creators that are currently like playing the game. There's a few that were making content for other games before. Like there's a few that I could think of. Like obviously Ash was making content for Clash of Clans before. Nub was making content for for WoW before I believe it was. He has a whole nother channel that was WoW. But there's like a few people who are like doing content creation for another game and then started doing raid content. But for the most part, a lot of people like came up on Raid Shadow Legends, yeah. bro. A lot of people built their, their brand off of Raid. Talking about building your brand, one thing that I like about being a YouTuber is building community, being able to connect with people who share the same interests and thoughts and create a space for positive interaction, negative, just like we talked about, but community. I I've said it so many times, I would not be playing Raid Shadow Legends for as long as I have had if the community wasn't top tier. If it wasn't S tier, I, I wouldn't be doing Raid. You guys are like awesome. I most of the time get overwhelmingly positive comments and interactions with you guys in my videos, on stream, on Discord. I gotta thank you guys for that. H Dub, what do you think about it? I mean, I feel like we all feel that, mm -hmm. you know. Without the community, man, this game is <laughs> this game is a whole different beast. I don't know. I would have definitely stopped playing. Like I've stopped playing Watcher Realms. Why? Because mm -hmm. I don't feel as connected to the community. It was much easier for me to just stop once I felt like I was done with the game. At times I felt like I was done with Raid. But was I done with the community? No, I got people I'm talking to every day. Yeah. And that has kind of made the game better for me every time. Every time when I felt like I did you know, just didn't want to be bothered with Ray. Like, and it's, it's not to say that I was actually intending on stopping the game, but the, the thought does cross your mind. It's like, dang, do I really want to be doing this right now? Like, no, I'm going to do something else. But I'm talking to people at Discord about IRL stuff yeah. who play Ray. So it's like, dang, we over here talking about our favorite beers and food and <laughs> what steak you just cooked and da, da, yeah. da. And then a raid something raid might pop up in one of the other channels and now i'm realizing like yeah man i'm talking to all raid people let me just let me pop on raid real quick and, and, and well. do something so the community is amazing right and as a content creator i mean if you want to be successful you obviously had to have to interact with a community build a community of your own you do need people supporting you you can't be successful without anyone supporting you 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 can go watch all your videos yourself but at that point it's like what do you what are you actually creating this content for are you doing it because you like creating content that's fine if you like creating content you don't ever have to upload it you don't have to be a youtuber you can go record <laughs> videos and never upload them some part of me believes that if you do want to get into it it's because you probably want to make some money from it and yeah. you can't do that without a community you need a community Build a community, connect with people, love people, man. Be happy, share experiences with people. And I, I love that part of it. I, I love that you said that. You yeah. should upset it. Love people, man. Spread the positive. <laughs> love people, love man. People. Love people. I love that. And that's why I always like make it a point to respond to everybody's comments. Uh, someone a while ago was like, man, Burrito, I can't wait for you to get big enough to the point where you're not even going to respond to to our comments and i'm like nah dude that's never gonna happen yep. even when i eventually get to 100k and whatnot like i'm gonna take the time because like like you said i cannot be where i am without you guys so you know I, and i remember your guys names the ones who were day one or like mm -hmm. sub 1k like i remember your guys's names um i might forget because i have like the worst mem i've got the memory of a goldfish but I'll take the time to respond to you. One of us goes up, we all go up. And I just realized I have a remnant summon here. There is a 2.5% chance to get a mythical. Oh, snap. If you could get one mythical H dub, who would it be? Garrel. Garrel? Heck yeah. I was gonna, I thought you were gonna say like Crixia or Allah is the sun bearer or something like that. Uh, I'm not that big on like re reset champ. Allah's, I, I, I'll be honest, I wasn't that impressed with Allah's. I, I did play with him. I've played with most of the mythicals. It's probably like two or three now since they've added so many that I haven't touched. Bro, Garrel. Bro, I've I've done some things in Lava Arena. <laughs> you said I've done, some things. <laughs> I've done some things. <laughs> Not all, it, obviously I don't have I only have Makage on my account, but yeah. I do Lava Arena from time to time on my clanmates accounts. And Garrel, man oh man. Man oh man. Let's see. Oh we my got? god. We got a mythical earth sign. Pull our two sacreds here. Come on, Ankara. Bro, 
You know, An Ancora and um, just because I didn't go for Narcissus, I didn't go for Ancora, but they smack, dude. Like, bro, they that's so good. My Taurus is just like weak, bro. Ancora is so good, Damn. man. That dude guy, Falman, is kind of annoying too. He is so annoying, bro. I it took me because my team was so fast. I killed the whole rest of the team. Mm -hmm. And like, we're just taking a ton of turns and I'm trying to figure out why we're doing zero damage. It got to a point where we were pretty much doing zero damage. I, I was about to go submit a ticket because I was like, why is this guy not dying? And so <laughs> he finally took a turn and then I started, he was taking damage. So I went to go look at the kid after because I don't look at champs if yeah. I don't have them. And I was looking at the pass and I'm like, yo, wait, this can go up to 100%. He was literally taking zero damage, bro. That's disgustingly disrespectful. And this one's going to be a primal. So hopefully we get something. Right. Come on. Uh. We got a mythical lone blade. Fourth thing that I like about doing YouTube is the monetization potential. The fact that you can make money on YouTube, that you can earn money through ads, sponsorships. I've never done a sponsorship, but you know, there's that. Or you can sell merch. I've never done that either. I only know about earning money through ads. I've only been monetized now for just over a year. So I got monetized last January. And like I had set a goal for myself I was like, hey, I really want to get monetized on YouTube because just speaking with one of my mentors, Darth Michael Transaction, who's like, hey, man, Twitch is fun. Streaming's great. Yep. But if you want to make some money, pop that YouTube off, bro. Yep. And like he helped me. He did a collab with me. We did a giveaway and like that got me all of the subs I needed. Like off of that video he did with me, I was able to get, you know, 1500 subs. And so at that point, it was just about me figuring out how to get the watch time. It took a little bit, but I ended up getting the watch time. Then I was monetized. So yeah, there's a lot of benefits to doing it. Content creation, money is one of them. And if you play your cards right, you can make some pretty good money. Um, I actually just did my first sponsorship for my YouTube channel. Oh, all the sponsorships I've yeah the dragon air one I did was actually the first one I've done on YouTube all the other sponsorships I've done were for Twitch and streaming dragon air was the first and it was an awesome opportunity I'm glad I took advantage of it that's one thing that I, <laughs> I like about it because now I can feel not too badly about spending money within raid on top of that tax deferrals the tax write-off I don't think I'd be spending as much as I have in raid if it weren't for the fact that uh, I could write it off as a a tax deferral we we gotta be getting hot now lend me your energy <laughs> lend it <laughs> let's get it oh my come god come on Cornelia. come on Cornelia. oh my gosh dude if i pull a dupe dude let me see let me see that let me see that gold let's go come on baby give me that gold uh, dude who is when, this? Did you, oh umetogi i ain't seen her in a minute what is this Learning new skills. When you become a YouTuber, you learn new things from video editing to marketing or learning how to advertise your, your video. Being a YouTuber pushes you to develop these valuable skills. I'm learning things that uh, I never thought I would take the time to learn. You know, how to set up your PC, the streaming equipment, recording equipment, the, the software involved, how to video edit. I had no interest in video editing until I had to start editing my own videos. And I learned that I actually fucking love editing videos. Uh, I do it for this channel, for my other two channels, and it's a great skill to have. h -Dub, what would you say like the top two skills are that you've learned doing YouTube? Number one, probably be public speaking. Like I came into content creation already like knowing a bit about editing you know i have a music background so i was mm -hmm. shooting music videos with my friends and stuff like we i've been editing for a long time so i would say I, I definitely got better with that but public speaking number one because it makes everything better right it makes everything easier it makes your videos better yes you get you know less editing time because <laughs> there's less there's there's less ums and uhs Bro. for you to cut out and yeah. things like that. yeah you find your topic and then boom you just go in right like you look at some content creators and it just looks so natural for them to make a video whereas yeah. you might watch some other people and it's like okay i can tell this guy might not be as comfortable on the screen that's not to say the content isn't bad that's not to say what he's talking about is invalid and that's not to say that this guy doesn't know what he's talking about yeah. he just might not have as much experience with public speaking and so i think that's the thing that you know that's probably number one for me 
Number two, I would say time management because mm -hmm. as someone who also works a full-time job, I'm married, I have a, a child and a host of other things that I do in real life, time management for me, because it's like, yes, I like making content, but I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I do need to make money off of this, right? Yeah. Well, I don't need to, but the fact that I'm doing it, I'm, I don't wanna do this and not make money, right? Otherwise I feel like I'm kind of wasting my time, right? Yeah. And so, because I am spending a significant amount of time on this, I need to know how to manage my time because I have other things that, you know, call my name all day so <laughs> dad, 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 dad. that that's one of them so time management man is is a big one and i think that had i not gotten the groove of managing my time a bit with this knowing how much how much i need to put in right knowing when to stop right all of these things are important and i feel like i'm still learning both of these things i'm still learning how to be better in front of the camera better to convey what I want in my video, right? Better with managing my time, making videos more efficiently, right? Mm -hmm. Because I, I have to edit my videos. I have to do yeah. all of my thumbnails. So I, I have to be meticulous about these things. So those are top two for me. And I can actually resonate with uh, the topic uh, public speaking. I'm still not 100% comfortable in front of a camera. And I still, my, my flow when I speak isn't exactly on par with somebody like Saf. Like I, I watch mm -hmm. Saf sometimes. Or, you know, I watch Cole Red. Cole Red is such a magnificent speaker. The way that he mm -hmm. speaks, it's on point, it's direct, it's clear, it's concise. Definitely public speaking is, is one thing that I'm still working on myself. So we're going to pull these two shards and then we're going to talk about some of the bad stuff uh, that comes with being a YouTuber. Quote unquote bad. Quote unquote. Lockwin <laughs> was a prime giveaway, I forgot. Come on, Ancora. Oh, Ooh, let's go. Oh, God damn it. No! Go ahead and empower that Rhonda. Bro! <laughs> I don't need Killian! Killian! What little faction guardian action? Oh my god, bro. Alright, it's fine. It's fine. We're good. We're good. We're good. All right. hey, look, look. You're like you're like a dupe away from getting some speed on that Taraz, right? Hey, that's actually true. I'ma wait until Polarium gives me a Taraz. Okay. And then it's over for y'all. Because I'm going to upload so many Taras videos. 100. <laughs> I'm 100 Taras videos. Taras all summer. <laughs> to nine seasons of H Dub and Taras. Exactly. Bro, I see the thumbnails now. I see. I can see custom thumbnails with you, Taras, just like arm in arm. Skipping just through the fields, me and Taras. You, you my and buddy. <laughs> You and Saras on the unicorn. Exactly. I can't wait. I can't wait. Tech troubles. When it comes to trying to learn how to be a YouTuber, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. I mean, a PC that I have, like so many different parts were, were messing up. Uh, setting up the camera can be a hassle. Microphone, set, sound, sound stuff, dude. I'm still not 100% with my with my mic placement, the settings, software, the lighting, everything that that comes with being a YouTuber. Like there's just so many things that can go wrong and trying to deal with that kind of leads to a little bit of burnout when it comes to being a YouTuber. Man, burnout is the right word, man. I'll give you a perfect example. This mm -hmm. happened and this happened last year. You know, some people watch this may or may not know. I did a, a, a series. Well, I wouldn't even call it a series because we didn't even, I didn't even get to do it with everyone I wanted to, but we had the Does He Play Raid, right? Where I had the content creators come on. It was like Jeopardy style, we're asking questions. I actually did one with the community. I had Mr. Burrito Slayer on there. there. I had you guys on. We did it live. We streamed it live on Twitch. After we finished recording, all the audio was muted and I was pissed and that was the first time i did one just with people in the community and like i was real excited about it we had three guests up that's the first time i had multiple people on it was it was great I, it really bummed me out man and i haven't done it since i haven't done it with anybody since i haven't reached out to anybody about doing it i just stopped it all together yeah i mean i want to do it again <laughs> but that was like a big tech mishap 
and it was so simple audio was running through the wrong channel it got muted along with all the music from the vod and i was dude i was floored you know when we do content man like people you know they go watch it and they're like hey this dude did this 20 minute video 30 minute video i'm looking at like you know shiny sometimes he does these like hour long videos two hours yeah like people don't realize how much time goes into doing these videos like all that we do be before we record after we record the upload process getting your thumbnails together like these things are they, they require a lot of energy and time some people might be you know in another tax bracket than me they can go pay to have this stuff edited after they record they don't have to worry about it or whatever but these things take time sometimes it bums you out the worst tech trouble you could probably have is like your pc going down yeah and then like you gotta just wait on it ship it to the manufacturer or whatever unless you're gonna fix it yourself but i pray that happens to no one i don't <laughs> want that to happen to me actually one of the biggest issues that i have for my my pc and like i had to like rush it ssd went out and i had to buy a new one luckily my wife uh who's the one who built my computer she bought me the pc and she built my computer for me she knew how to do all of that. It was a fair. It was fairly simple, but there was a lot of moving parts that I just I wasn't gonna know. Uh, so mm -hmm. you know, shout out to my wife who was able to do that for me. And SSDs are expensive. You know, having to just out of nowhere pull I think it was like one fifty something like that for a new SSD was kind of like oh gosh, constant battle with yeah. tech, dude. All right, let's go pull these two sacreds. All right, so we just got a Lego. We're we're not gonna be hot. We're not gonna be hot. I mean, we we got a hot chance to get in a core now. We've got 20% chance. That's true. That's we true. got 20% chance, man. I know a guy in my community is named Synth, and he actually looks like this guy. So every time I see Elfrig, I'm like, oh, hey, it's Synth. You start with this one. Talk about burnout uh, within Raid or just anything. I got you, man. Burnout. Burnout, burnout. I think that it happens. People deal with it differently. I think that um, if you have time management burnout looks a lot different for you yeah. because some people will consider burnout like okay this guy's not uploading right now like me like i you know if i don't feel like upload i'm not gonna upload yeah. whereas people have managed their time they're gonna record all the videos they need and have it ready to go whatever so burnout for them might look like maybe they just don't take the game as serious maybe they don't play the game as much but they're still gonna record some content they're still gonna upload content but maybe they just don't take the game as serious i wish i was those guys because i wish i was still uploading even through the burnout because i'm still playing the game i just might not be uploading um or i might not be streaming after my dragon air sponsorship man i took a month off I said, I'm not doing anything for the next month. The month of April, I enjoyed my birthday. It was great, bro. I felt amazing. I haven't taken that much time off since last summer. It just felt great. Yeah, so when it comes to burnout for me, like it's the, the pressure to constantly create something. And we'll talk more about that uh, later on. Having to perform in front of the camera sometimes, it can lead to burnout. Uh, like you were talking about with having to upload. I, I see it too uh, with myself. Like la last night, I had I have like, five different videos that I need to get done. But last night I was just watching Jujutsu Kaisen with my wife. Like I, I, I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to be in front of the camera. I didn't want to even play raid. I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to chill out. I think Tairaku took like a month off in January. And like people were like, dude, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And he came back and he was actually talking about this subject, doing this day after day after day. It can burn you out. It can burn you out on the game, burn you out from doing YouTube. So I suggest if you're Thinking about doing this, uh, like H Dub said, time management is probably going to be the best tool against burning out, knowing when to take breaks and letting that happen. Because we're all human, we do get burned out. Chill out. The, the yeah. audience can wait another day or two, or you know, if they're if they're the real ones, they'll stay until you're done with your month. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. all right, let's go ahead and pull our two sacreds here, and Cora. Come on, Cora. Come, Come on. on. Karam, who's it gonna Lego, be? Lego. <sighs> how, do, how do you pronounce that guy's name? Do it in. I've heard, I think I've heard more variations for this guy's name than anybody in Ray Shadow Legends. How do you pronounce it? Waiting. It's waiting? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've heard Dewey Dan, Dwayden, <laughs> Dudin. <laughs> I've heard so much. <laughs> Every time we say his name now, we just got to change it up. It's you, dude. dude. All right, privacy concerns. Sharing your life online can blur the lines between public and private life. It's, it's a constant, especially because, like, I have my wife. I don't want anything to, to happen. So I'm very, like, I guess ambivalent about sharing, like, even just my, my real name or, or anything 
about my life, location, and, and anything. How do you feel about privacy? Because I know some YouTubers don't care about sharing their name or showing where they live or anything like that. But what do you think? Mm -hmm. You got to be cautious, man. At the end of the day, we all got whatever we got coming to us. Like, I've been a little more lax at times. You know, I'll share things about myself. But no, I'm not going to share everything about yeah. my personal life. I don't even do that with people I interact with in IRL. So why would I do it online? I'll share what I share for the people that I do talk with, you know, mm -hmm. daily. Other content creators I work with, you know, might share names with one another, tell each other our real names. So we have a more personal, you know, uh, relationship as we work. It does help out for the work relationship. It is a concern. I've seen some disturbing things online. People will go to disturbing lengths to try to disturb your peace. No, I don't want that. I do have a family and um, I don't want what I do to affect them in any way. I don't want to put them in harm's way. I live a, a comfortable life, right? It's not the best life. I'm not rich or anything like that, but I do enjoy my life. I don't need any random stuff that happened on the internet because I said something in a raid video <laughs> to mess that up <laughs> at all. <laughs> Me, sometimes I get a little hot and I'm still learning to like chill out sometimes. I innately challenge back, if, if you know what I mean, but like I'm, I'm getting older. I do have my wife and um, my cats that I, I care about. So, you know, I'm gonna take a book. I'm gonna take a note out of your book here and just be a little more cautious when it comes to dealing with people online. Cause yeah, I've seen some stuff, man. My wife has shown me some things on YouTube, especially like women streamers or, or YouTubers, people showing up at their houses, lighting their cars on fire, or just like stalking them. It's, it's nuts, dude. People will do yeah, some man. crazy shit. These things happen. I've seen some crazy things in like people who were playing in private Minecraft servers or GTA servers or what have you. And like, they go find, they go find these people. It's just sick, man. Just leave people alone. Some people got time. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> they got time. Bro. All right. Speaking of time. Come on, that Cora. Come on, it's, it's a Cora time. This guy's actually pretty good for doing damage in Sylvan Watchers. I think one of the biggest issues in Sylvan Watchers is not having a damage dealer, but. Of course, bro. I have two at 60 oh, that I've okay. run in Faction Wars. Why am I even <laughs> telling you, though? Why am I even telling you? Why, didn't you? why didn't you stop me before I said anything? You should just held your hand up and be like, bro. I know. <laughs> he can he can pretty much solo the faction. Like if he just keeps getting extra turns, he's just, he's just gonna blast his way through. Copyright issues. Navigating copyright restrictions, dude. Avoiding accidental infringement or just saying the wrong thing. Recently I had a video taken down and I got a warning. Not a strike, but a warning on YouTube because of something that I said in the video. I didn't even say anything wrong. I can't even say it here because I don't want the, this video. But I basically said two specific words talking about people not putting specific types of comments in the videos. But basically, I wasn't allowed to say that. And when I cut out that one part, I was able to re-upload the same video without any issues. And the warning was because I was showing dangerous stuff on you on the video. And I was just like, I'm giving away an account. Right? It's a video game. Bro. I have experience with music and like publishing music. I've had to deal with copyright stuff before, right? And like applying for copyrights, copywriting my brand. Brand that I started with my dad, getting copyrights on our logos, copyrights on names of specific things. I kind of understood it. So the only, you know, copyright issues I've had would be like stuff that I was aware of going into it. You know, live streaming on YouTube. I like to play whatever music I like. I'll take it. You can mute it. I don't care. I had a great time streaming. If I if I go on the stream, I don't care about, you know, making too much money from it, right? Because I stream because I like streaming. Now, YouTube video is different. I'm not going to do anything to jeopardize my YouTube video being demonetized. Take the, the video upload a lot more serious. Whereas the stream, I'm just, I'm doing it for the love. I'm doing it to talk to the community. Like if we got to mute it after, if you weren't there, I'm sorry. You know, I've had to, you know, mute whole streams. I have like a stream on my YouTube channel. Most of it's probably muted because of the music we were playing. But I think, you know, you educate yourself, right? You educate yourself. You see, you know, what you need to be avoiding, what you can actually do, the things that you can actually publish, right? Because this is this is publishing, right? It seems like something so simple. You are in fact publishing content, right? This has now become intellectual property. And if you don't own 100% of it, YouTube is gonna call you out. So I think of just being aware, man. Let's get two in. Come on. Dude. Ah! Magnar! Magnar. Plus four Magnar. Plus incoming. four Magnar. <laughs> <laughs>
world's strongest shaman. I don't know that they're going to do plus four, though. They might do plus two. If they do plus four, I feel like they're going to cut bonuses in half. <laughs> Always being on. When it comes to being a YouTuber, one thing that it doesn't really bother me, but one thing that I've noticed is that I'm always, always on. If I'm not creating something, if I'm not recording a video, if I'm not editing, I honestly feel like I'm wasting time. Yesterday, mm -hmm. I feel like I wasted a lot of time. Like I streamed and I did stuff, but like I knew I could have been creating something. And because I wasn't doing that and I was watching anime with my wife instead, not that it, that was a complete waste of time, but like I felt like I wasn't doing something. I, I felt like I wasn't being productive. That's one thing I would kind of consider to be negative. You do have this feeling of always being on. You know, the guys that are full time, the guys that actually do this for a living, right? They don't have a job to go to. That's why you actually do see them always on, right? You see their videos coming out every day. You see them, you know, the ones that do stream and post videos, you see them streaming every day and dropping videos every day because this always on, you know, quote unquote thing is, is an actual thing, right? And so I'll tell you very similar experience, right? To you, if I'm not recording a video, if I've, you know, chosen to not do some content that day, yeah, I do think about it. I think about, huh, I could be doing this or I should be doing this. So I'm going to check YouTube studio. Hey, what are my views at now? Did somebody comment that I need to respond to? Cause like, you know, I'm trying to respond to all the comments as well. We have goals, right? So I guess that's where it always starts. And until you reach that goal, until you have accomplished what you want to accomplish, at the moment you're not working, you're going to think about what you're, what you're not doing because you're going to see other people posting, right? You see other people's, what they're accomplishing, what they're getting done. And you're like, man, I should be doing this too, because if I do it too, I'm going to have what they have, or I'm going to be one step closer to my goal, right? We shouldn't think of it in terms of like, I'm going to have what they have, but the fact that you are allowing someone else to upload, seeing that notification or seeing their post affect you and how you are processing the time that you have taken off yep. just speaks value. You gotta be okay with going and watching an anime with your wife, man. I'm just coming off the month, bro, the month off. I've only uploaded three videos. <laughs> you know what I did for that month off, bro? Tell me. I watched NBA basketball every day. Playoffs going on right now. I was watching basketball every day, chilling with my wife. Like we going out, having a good time, ordering Uber Eats, whatever. Yeah. Like yeah, a few, few birthdays in the family, mine and my nieces. Yeah, I'm seeing all these CCs upload. I'm seeing all of these things i think about these things i'm like oh man is this the day i step back into content creation nah i'm i'm gonna go watch another game i'm i'm enjoying myself yeah. but when you are doing it, it there is this feeling of always being on i am constantly checking on my last few uploads i'm looking at the statistics i'm looking at the analytics i'm looking at everything yes. because i want to see how it's doing i want to know how it's doing compared to what my competitors are doing you can easily say i don't worry at all about competitors there's no competition i'm not i don't look at these guys bro i don't know any successful business that doesn't Look at what their competitors are doing. Exactly. This is a business. I feel like there's two ways you could look at YouTube. You could do it as as a hobby or a passion, or you could treat it as a business. And me, I aim to treat across all three of my channels as a business. I don't necessarily look at you or like anybody else's competition. I would look at you guys more as like, you guys are where I want to be. You guys have walked the path that I want to walk. There is some small percentage of my in my head where I'm just like, okay, well, I mean, at, at some point, these guys have to be competition because there's only so many viewers, especially in Raid Shadow Legends, the community isn't, you know, but I mean, I think about it again, I'm just like, you know, they can watch both of us, right? And I'm like, exactly. Oh. So there's there's that. You have to go about it that way, bro. And it, in no particular order. I've had people say, yo, who is Mr. Burrito Slayer? Why does he have a thousand views on this video? Yo, I only got 200 on mine. I'm not lying. This was this was a long. This was last year sometime. But it was a video you had that was that actually did pretty well. And I broke down analysis for it. I was like, Yo, do you not see the thumbnail? The thumbnail is a one. First of all, people are going to click on this. That's number one. This conversation we're talking about about like our our content creators in our field competition or you know are they not? You have to think about that because if we're all uploading on the same topic, somebody's going to say, Well. I made a better news video. Why is he getting more views than me? But I have more subs than him. People are going to say that. It is natural. I feel like you have to be aware of that. And then I think, well, this is what I do. I'm not telling anybody what to do. <laughs> after that, after I assess the situation, I take my step back and I say, okay, cool. That's literally the definition of competition, bro. Yeah. A bunch of people doing the exact same thing to achieve a specific goal. And like, that doesn't mean that... Uh, 
what are the words? What what are the what are the exact words? And you might have to c- cut some of yeah, those. No, take, take I'm time. trying to I'll edit everything. I'm trying to think. You take a step back and say, okay. Ah, oh, fuck it, man. I can't. I can't. I don't know. <laughs> <how> to... <laughs> you know what? Fuck all that. This is a competition. There you go. It's just the nature of the beast. Try to bring some people along with you. Let's do this. Come on, Ancora! I swear to God, if Ancora doesn't pop through, bro. Come on, man. Ancora! Come on. Dude. Ah, uh, that's 20 sacreds so far, right? That's 20. Yeah, I think that's 20 sacreds. You gotta get that key. You gotta go all the way down, bro. It sucks. What? You gotta get the, you gotta get a key. It's bad. Why? It's a terrible path. Yeah, you got 80k. Should I have enough to get a, get a key in? Ooh, Lego book. Ooh. It's not enough of those. Ooh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you knew what I'm talking about, burrito. <laughs> Everybody at home might not know what you're talking about. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> All right, man. This conversation will continue over on H Dub's channel. H Dub, thank you for coming on to my channel. Thank you for your time. Bro, anytime. As long as I got the time, I'm a I'll come talk with you, man. For sure.